Um, okay, I'm just record here. Um, yeah, so I was really excited. I wanted to bring on Sydney um, to the session today to kind of talk about social media and her platform um, because social media is kind of really growing and we've noticed that Sydney has a really good following. She's constantly posting online. Um, and not only that, but she has really good engagement, um, as well as over 5,000 followers now, which is um, really good. Congratulations. Um, so I just thought that maybe we could have an interview with her and uh, see kind of how she's built her channel and how others can kind of take from that as well and build up their channels too. Um, so Sydney, I would like to introduce you and if you wanted to introduce yourself and kind of talk about kind of how you got started with social media and with bricks that would be good well thank you so much for having me in that introduction um basically i am i'm Alberta. i moved from ontario to old alberta so if any of you guys know old it's like super small town and i came from ontario which is a huge province so culture shock um, and I finished high school in Olds and then did two diplomas at Olds College. Uh, and I found a love for photography through my grandmother being creative. She kind of a weird story. She's a little bit of a free spirit, never worked a day in her life, like paints murals, takes crazy cool photos. So growing up, she would always like stop on the side of the road and take cool shots of photos. It's got passed down to me. When I finished college, though, I was still quite young. I believe I was 19. So no credibility to start a social media business whatsoever. Um, but that's what I wanted to do. And I guess in time, I decided to get kicked in the business world a bit after college. I was an HR recruiter for a year for a Fortune 500 company in sales. And then I went into office manager and social media marketing for a different company for a year. And I really saw a need for it in the industry. So at 21, I remember golfing with my father, telling him I wanted to start a social media company. And he was on board. My dad is very um, strict, I guess. So really wants the best for me. And I was so shocked that he was so on board with this. Um, right away, he found a lawyer for me to start a social media business um, and started helping me get clients essentially to run bigger businesses, social media platforms. So I was doing that for about three years. And then I met Riley, my lovely boyfriend, who convinced me to merge and partner with him and start um, Bricks Real Estate Group. So huge passion for that. I absolutely love it. And in that I was able to build our own brand as well as continue to build my brand, which helps attract agents and just allows me to connect with people from all across the world. So I still get to maintain that passion while building our real estate empire together. That's kind of how I got into all of it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I've noticed that. And I think even Riley has quite a few followers and, and things on his page too, as well as your Bricks account. Um, so how do you manage them both? I manage four, actually. It's insane. <gasps> um, so there's like schedules I do. I have two accounts logged in on my iPhone, two accounts logged in on my iPad, and I'll post on each of them morning and afternoon. Mm -hmm. so that they're each getting posted on twice a day for the most part on mine and bricks Riley's is more once a day mm -hmm. uh but more time blocking I guess so you have to treat social media basically as a marketing pillar because that's what it is mm -hmm. and it's going to like make you known make you money you build relationships stuff. with people um and it needs to be treated as such so scheduling that in your schedule 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night. I promise you in six to eight months, like it's going to blow up if you can commit to one hour a day and just break it up. Oh, totally. Totally. Do you ever like, do you schedule out your content or do you just kind of post it as you go throughout the day? Like, do you use certain apps like, or do you post it on Facebook or? Good question. Uh, I'm the dinosaur on Facebook. I think I have like 30 friends or something. Okay. So no, not Facebook. Uh, 
I don't schedule it really. It's more so, um, I try to post twice a day, like it's a morning, afternoon. And I try to think about when I have time to scroll Instagram is usually when I post because most other people will probably have time to scroll Instagram. I will give some uh, good times though to post if you're just getting started. Um, anywhere from that 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. is really good for the morning uh, because people are just getting to work, commuting to work. They are scrolling, unfortunately, at red lights, but it's the truth. <laughs> and uh, noon, lunchtime. Lunchtime is really, really good. It gets tons of engagement in between that 12 and 2 o'clock. And then around that five to seven mark in the evening gets really good engagement as well. Cause those are the times people are getting home or sitting at their desk. Um, mm -hmm. and, and they're just like scrolling. Yeah. And okay. Okay. That's definitely helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when you post things, like when you're posting your reels or posting your stories and you ask questions and things like that, are you like responding to their comments right away? Are you engaging or do you wait a little while? I'm just wondering if that's important to be on there like ASAP or like if it's okay to kind of leave the comments for a bit. Definitely good to be on there ASAP um, mm -hmm. because then it gets people watching what questions are being asked and then they feel comfortable to ask. It doesn't mm -hmm. really show who's asking questions, only you see it, but really good to be on it ASAP. And then that's when it comes down to scheduling it. So once a month, I'll do this thing on my story. It's ask me a question. Um, and it's prepared for in my day planner, because it's like a six hour activity. Yeah. So if you are doing that, I would recommend ASAP, take like a couple hour break, get back on it at lunch, and then wrap it up like when the 24 hours is done, because this is something that would be on your story. Mm -hmm. So finish up then yeah okay okay that's helpful and then I also know that if nobody knows so sometimes when you post things on your Instagram and you ask say like ask me a question or ask me anything and you're like okay well I really want people to answer these questions or ask these questions so I can go see if you have a smaller account you're just getting started and no one is asking you questions to these things Instagram kind of it's helpful that way because what you can do is you can answer the questions yourself so if some, if you say, ask me anything, you can go onto your account and you can ask questions to yourself. And that way, when you answer them online on your stories, it shows up as if people have asked you a question. So even if no one's asking you a question, you can kind of go in and ask yourself questions and then answer them yourself um, to make it look like people are asking you those questions, which kind of engages people into wanting to ask you like, oh, this person gets tons of questions. I'm going to ask them one too. Exactly. That was something I did the first time I did it like a year yeah. ago. And then once you get up to about that 2000 follower mark, you can count on about eight questions coming in around there, eight to 10. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. And when you're trying to build your following, like what did you find was most effective? Like, did you follow people back? Did you go to your friends' pages and follow them? Or did you just kind of let them come in organically? A little bit of both. Um, Basically, it's you need to have an organic following if you want any type of engagement. Um, lots of people will buy their followers and it won't result in engagement. So what I personally did and did with my clients accounts is follow their ideal clientele or anybody who would want to see their posts. And I would do that off of. So I guess I'll use an example. Um, there's this really big real estate agent here in Calgary. I think he has like 30,000 followers, um, does a great job with, with social media. And I wanted to attract real estate agents to my profile. So I went and followed real estate agents, more women, because I resonate with them more. My page is very like women empowerment kind of. So I would follow all those people or like Lululemon, I would follow everybody who liked their most recent post because mm -hmm. then you know those people are active they're liking something that had been posted the day before and it's actually people who I post fitness as well so I know those people would follow me back because mm -hmm. they're following Lululemon which is a fitness account I post about Peloton and all this stuff all the time so they're more likely to follow me back mm -hmm. um, and then I unfollow anybody who doesn't follow me 
to, so that way my ratio stays high and my following is lower, which is more attractive for brands. Cause once you get to that, like 3000 mark, you, lots of brands will start to like reach out to you and want to collaborate with you. Um, and you'll just have more <clears throat> ability. So definitely, um, yeah, just following people that are your target audience and including that in your bio. So I have Aussie mom, I have an Australian shepherd. I post about them all the time, uh, travel, real estate and fashion in my bio. And those are the things that people can expect to see from my page. So they'll follow me because they know what I'm going to be posting about. So a lot of my followers are like Australian shepherd moms, fashion accounts, um, fitness, because they see right away. And I, I'm consistent with what I deliver in that category as well. So make sure you guys are doing that. If you want real estate agents on your account, if you want like, I don't know if you hike, maybe put hiking in your bio and mm -hmm. then you can post your hiking photos and your real estate photos. And uh, that's super important as well. Mm -hmm. That's that's smart. I know I've definitely gone on to our Sims account and followed people Um as well, just kind of from other channels, but I never thought about really going to the recent posts. So maybe as an agent, you could go to like the, we have tours and Nanaimo sites or explore Nanaimo, those kind of sites, wherever your city is and go on there and like, or follow the people who have liked their most recent posts. That's really smart. Mm -hmm. It's just, you. it's certainty that they're engaged. Yeah. Um, and it creates a way bigger follow back. And then if you go, so every 24 hours I do this, Morning, this is really important to keep that ratio going. Um, you scroll all the way down to your follow following. So whoever you're following and those are the people who don't follow you back. And I would unfollow all of the ones who didn't follow me back. Okay. Yeah. Cause they're not going to like, it's, it's, yeah, it's just going to create a bigger ratio on your end than Mm -hmm. and yeah just so you're not following 10,000 people with 900 followers yeah <laughs> but when I first COVID oh here I'm just gonna mute her there <laughs> um and so another thing I wanted to know is where do you get your inspiration from um because we have a lot of problems with that um more so on the coaching side where people will come to us and say like we don't know what to post we don't know what we're doing and if we are posting it's only getting like two likes um, so we definitely have ideas for people, but I'm just kind of wondering where you get your inspiration from to make posts. Good question. Um, honestly, it comes from within. That's the only thing that seems to get engagement because yep. it's, people are following you to learn about you and your habits and what you're about. And they want to see that they can tell if somebody else is doing it for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and, or if you, you're mimicking something. So for example, I'm staring at my healthy plants right now. Maybe I'll do a post on top three ways I care for my plants. Mm -hmm. And it's stuff that you don't think is relevant, like very simple things. Um, you know, you it, post a picture of your coffee with your three local favorite businesses and tag those local businesses. Because if I'm tagging my three local Calgary favorite shop, coffee shops are analog monogram, Phil and Sebastian and I tag them, those coffee companies are going to repost my post and they have like 70,000 followers. So they're going to see me on their story and follow me. So um, basically being very authentic with your content and stuff that you don't think is going to get engagement actually will. Um, this really dumb video I posted, I, I was trying to do the trending song. So I stood up on the coffee table and was eating cereal <gasps> saying, when you realize you're an adult in your own house without any supervision, like that's very simple, kind of dumb, but it blew up in one hour. I had like 600 likes on the video and I was just like, what the heck? And it was simple, right? You got to be simple with it. Don't do novels. People aren't going to read that stuff. People can resonate with. Um, a really good goal with your social media is like when people come to your account, figure out what you want them to feel. Do you want them to get value from your posts? Do you want them to walk away with a new smoothie recipe? Do you want them to walk away with like new plant tips or maybe real estate tips? Um, I will say a really big byproduct of just being organic and yourself on Instagram is going to have agents messaging you like no other. Like this one girl from Keller Williams in the States 
responds to every single one of my stories because she's into fashion. She's into real estate. She also has an Aussie. So mm-hmm. if the more you post, the more engagement you're going to get and be so authentic. Um, I would only take social media clients for six months and that was it because I'd help them build their Instagram, teach them how to maintain it and they need to maintain it because people know, people literally know if you're the one not maintaining your social media Mm -hmm. Um, and that's how you lose your engagement and lose your followers because they're following you for that authenticness. Okay. Yeah. That's really good. Um, we have a comment. So Susan said, how do you differentiate between your personal account and the bricks account? Um, so choosing what you're posting between which one gets which post. Okay. Yeah. Great question. Um, my personal brand is me. I don't, I don't post real estate on there. If I am, it's a story from the bricks account, um, just to show, you know, that we do real estate and stuff. But on the personal one, you should keep it very, very authentic and organic. Now, if this is, um, if you're a real estate agent solo without a team and don't have that like team Instagram, Mm -hmm. then I would do one post a day personal and one post a day real estate. To be honest, people don't really care about the houses you sell. If you post a few on your page, it's enough there to show the credibility, but they really don't care to see houses that they can see on MLS. They want to know who is showing up to show them the house. They want to know what you look like. They want to know what coffee you drink. They want to know your personality. So when they show up to a showing, they know what to expect, right? Um, If they want further detail in the real estate, then they can see your post that you posted previously, not as much, or go to your team account. Um, If you do have a team account that you are trying to start and manage, it's also really important to um, put stuff on there that your clients and other agents are gonna resonate with. Uh, I know Sims taught us this giving, like give, give, give your clients, agents, just be a giver. Uh, people want to see that they want to know that the, the money they're paying you to sell a home is going back into the business or to gift other people just being used properly. They want to see your agents reading a book. They want to see maybe a couple properties you've sold, but not, you know, Mm -hmm. it's it's a little eyesore when you go to a profile and it's like all homes. (laughs) I know. I, I see that too. I'm like, People don't really want to see the just solds anymore. Like we post the same thing. So we post a couple just listed, a couple just sold, but a lot of it we're trying to do is who we are and who the community is. Like, so we're trying to sell our community. We're trying to educate, but we're trying to show you who we are too, because a lot of the time on social media, people are going there to figure out who you are. Um, and that's what I try to tell um, our coaching clients as well, is that if you're not posting who you are as a person, because that's what people want. They want to find that friend, that person who is similar to them. And if you're not posting that, that's okay, but they're going to go ahead and find someone who will post it and who is posting that so they can become friends with them and imagine themselves with them. Exactly. My best friend came from um, an online lead who found me on social media, who resonated with me. And now I would take a bullet for her that came from my personal brand and she's a huge client of ours. So, yeah. and, and it's, um, there's something else I was going to touch on about that there. It'll come. It'll come. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of comments. Um, Jason said, how annoying do you find it? Just listing, just sold that have nothing else that every realtor seems to be doing. Yeah, exactly. You want to be different and show who you are and what you're doing is super important. Um, That's what I was going to touch on. If you are posting it, do a carousel post. So every couple weeks, maybe post like the 10 most recent homes you sold in one post, because you can post up to 10 photos on Instagram at a time, but they don't, all 10 don't post your feed. It goes into one carousel. So that's a really good way to showcase what you're selling. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, Kelly has a question. She said, does Instagram show you if those that you're following, follow you back? I've only seen this function used on a separate app. Instagram? No. Uh, and don't use those apps. I've gotten like shadow banned and my whole Instagram account almost got lost. I was like sick to my stomach. It was horrible. Don't use them. So that's like one thing you take away. Please don't. 
Uh, you can see who's not following you at the very bottom of your following. Um, or if you click on somebody and they follow you, but you don't follow them, the mm -hmm. blue tab will say follow back. And that means they follow you, but you don't follow them. That's true. That's a good point. Um, yeah, I know. I heard of another person guiding shadow band as well, and they lost their whole account because they used an app with that. Um, <laughs> I do have an app, but I don't, that tells you your unfollowers, but I will not use it on any professional accounts. <laughs> it's just not worth it. <laughs> it gets shadow banned. Oh my word. It happened to the Bricks account too. And that's when mm -hmm. I was like, this is it. <laughs> yeah. Instagram always wants everything from Instagram. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Jason said, you hit one thing today that I completely agree with. Authenticity is key. Yeah, definitely being yourself is really important. Um, Riley said reels or reels. Um, yeah, reels are really important. Um, and I think that they definitely are an easy way to help you get views. Um, we'll post something on TikTok and it'll get maybe 50 views. And then on Instagram, we'll get a couple thousand views. Um, definitely. I do like reels. Um, <laughs> Jason wants to know your thoughts on reels as well. Ooh, I did not like them in the beginning. Unfortunately, it's hard to grow a following without doing it. After doing it a couple of times, they become kind of fun. Um, and honestly, it's helped my following significantly. I would recommend posting reels like four times a week, but there is a trick to it. So anything 30 seconds, like above 30 seconds, um, Instagram doesn't like that. So it actually will show your video to way less people. Um, the ideal reel is actually seven seconds. And then from 14 to 17 seconds is second best. And then 25 to 30. So mm -hmm. if you're going to be making a reel, those are the time frames to kind of keep it within. Also use the trending music. Sometimes it's like this crazy rap, which is like, so not my scene but I have to use it because it's trending. Yeah. Um, and when you start doing reels more, it is fun. You get to showcase a different side of you. It's way more authentic. People can't really like edit reels this beyond like changing the brightness and stuff. So it's way more genuine um, and it resonates with so many more people. So just it, the first few are very uncomfortable. If you scroll to my first few reels, like I cringe to death every time I watch them, but it, I would recommend doing it for sure. It really helps your following and just the trust that people have in you as well. It creates so much trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, absolutely. Asian and Sid, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. We've noticed something in the last like month, Sydney, and, I, and cause I know you just kind of gave the advice on like the times of, of reels, but we've been posting a lot of like one, one minute reels recently, and they're getting like a crazy amount of organic views that more than we had in the past. And I'm wondering if you think that's the TikTok effect, because I know that Instagram is seeing TikTok blow up and TikTok is all about like the one minute reels. And so I've noticed that in their algorithm, like very recently in the last month page, you've noticed it too, that reels are like blowing up. Like they are really favoring, favoriting, stuff that's similar to what you would see on TikTok. And I wonder if you think it's because they're trying to directly compete with, with TikTok because they're seeing that growth. So I just love your perspective. I absolutely think that. I think that's why Reels are Instagram's favorite type of content right now as well. Um, when you are posting Reels, they get most of the time more engagement than posts. And by engagement, I mean like saves, sends. Um, like Instagram's favorite thing right now is sending a Reel. So if, even if you don't like it, but you want to support your friend, you should probably send it because it's considered a like. And yes, Jason, to answer your question, I think that is because of TikTok. Uh, like TikTok doesn't do still photos. So, um, and it's very, I think people love TikTok because it's really relatable, right? It's, it's quick for people to process as well. It's quick. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I do think so. I think Instagram is trying to compete and I wouldn't be surprised if TikTok actually like really took over Instagram, to be honest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when it comes to things, so when you're, whether you're posting, so doing like a feed post or a reel or a story, what one do you think is most effective and like, what do you like best? 
<clears throat> okay, so I like them all for different reasons. It's uh, stories are so important, you guys. It is a way for people to engage with you daily. Like, I don't sell real estate. I'm not even licensed yet. And there's 10 agents a day reaching out to me on my personal brand. Like I'm so wish I could recruit them, but I can't. So um, definitely stories. People get to interact with you every time you post a story. Um, and it's a really good way for people to keep up with your lifestyle and buy into you and your lifestyle. Um, so the, the best I've, I've done a ton of research on this 10 to 18 stories a day is what Instagram likes. That seems so crazy. You would be surprised how many people watch them. Like 5,000 followers isn't crazy. There's people out there with like 20,000 followers, but people trust you more because you have less followers. It's like called a micro influencer. So there's more trust in you. You're posting more stories, which people are like understanding your lifestyle and everything. And then you add your posts and your reels on top of that mm -hmm. you know people are going to line up to chat with you and join your team or buy a home from you in a heartbeat if you can you know post about 10 to 18 stories and it's like fitness food coffee maybe your outfit if you're into that what book you're reading if you go to the gym like there's six right there in five seconds so like your dog it doesn't have to be all you mm -hmm. um and then your your profile should showcase that as well yeah. Okay. That's I really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know I definitely watch stories more than I will. I don't think I honestly I barely scroll feeds anymore. I'm it's mostly just watching the stories. And if they're sharing their post to their story, then I'll click on it. But I definitely always go to the stories first. I agree. Um yeah, Riley says stories are a great way to showcase your authenticity and who you are as a person, reels provide flavor and posts are the highlight of your life. Exactly, that's a really good way to put it. I like Very that. Right. Thank you. <laughs> um, I was wondering, Sydney, is there apps that you use to post, like to edit with social media, whether it's like your designs or your videos? What are you using for that? Yeah, so great question. There's lots of stuff out there and you can easily spend a lot of time trying to figure out what's best. Um, I use Feed Preview. That is the only thing I use. And then to edit my photos, I actually do it right in iPhone. So love getting, well, not getting, I love forcing my boyfriend. You should see how humiliated he is in public trying to get my content. <laughs> but I make him take my content on my iPhone and I make sure live is on. This is such a trick, you guys. I learned this last year. I don't know how nobody told me, but live, you can pick from 10 different photos so like when you take the photo it shoots it for more than a few seconds and you can actually choose which one is best and then you can edit the lighting the best quality in in just your camera roll uh iphone is fantastic for changing your brightness and your contrast etc and then i'm just going to show you guys feed preview if it isn't blurry um, you can have as many accounts on feed preview and I have bricks and Riley or bricks and mine on this one. And then Riley's and, um, our real estate groups, Instagram on the iPad. I use feed preview for all of them. So if you look on here, this is the bricks account. So this is like the last photo posted mm -hmm. and I have content planned like all the way up to here and it really just like helps the color scheme and the vibe of your Instagram that's another huge thing that people are going to follow you based on is how presentable is your feed and your vibe of your profile like is it appealing to the eye if it is you're going to get followed it's a little like wonky that can actually hurt some people's brains. So try to organize it in a pattern that represents you, colors that represent you, and that are just overall appealing. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And then your video, your reels, do you just edit those directly in Instagram? Or? Yes. So my reels actually, this is really important if you want to do well with reels and post a lot of reels, take 10 second videos of random stuff whenever you can, like just, you know, opening a cool drink, take a 10 second video. Cause you will add it into a real one day. Maybe you want to shout out that drink company. 
and you have like a picture of you popping off the beer cap or a video of you popping off the beer cap. And then that like brewery might retag you. Um, and I'm constantly shooting videos. My, everyone around me is like, can you just be in the moment? <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes. But I also, you know, have content to create. So mm -hmm. If you do get to a point where it is, you know, a lot, you have to start to take a step back sometimes and not show, show things because you do need to appreciate the moment, but constantly just taking quick videos, then you can bulk it and make reels. You're stuck on what to post, go back in your videos, post a quick seven second video of like, I don't know, your dog doing a flip or something. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, great. Well, does anybody have any other questions? Um, for a I, I actually have a question Paige, if you don't mind. Um, it's, it's so interesting. I'm sitting here listening to Sydney and I, I feel like I've watched so many other, um, social media gurus on Instagram who are constantly preaching the idea that, you know, if you're a realtor, for example, or if you have a business, 80% of the content on your page should be business related versus, versus personal related. Right. And so I'm always kind of holding back on, you know, because I have two, two dogs myself and, you know, I love them to pieces. Of course, I have a family and all of that, but I'm constantly holding back on sharing every little detail of my personal life because I'm like, well, people should be following me or at least I hope they follow me for, for you know, for the business aspect. Yeah, so... Um you know, posting your, your successes and stuff is super fantastic. And I definitely personally think 20% should be that like a bit of a reverse. Cause you know, people are going to get sick of seeing homes being sold just constantly on your feet. You could showcase your dogs and be like my real estate mascots, or, you know, um, you could show your, you could do a fun, there's ways to showcase your business as well in a fun way. So if you wanted to showcase a home you were selling, you could do a quick 30 second like video tour. Uh, it doesn't have to be of you, but maybe your favorite details of the home, something that's going to provide value beyond just listed or just sold or another family service. Do you want people to come and get different types of value from your page? And that's how they're, that's when they're going to consistently come back to you you want them to want more of you leave them wanting more of you correct and that is actually something that I have been doing more of um I actually just had a listing uh hit the market a couple of days ago so I I have been doing more of that you know like the the personal tours I also tend to do that as I'm showing homes to other buyers because I feel like that's important you know to kind of show what's out there in the market um, but a lot of the content that I feel like I'm trying to put out there through reels is more um, educational, if anything. Okay. Um, I would like, I can definitely take a look at, at your Instagram too, as well. Um, and, and if you're showing like reels and home tours and stuff, Julia, what's something that makes you unique about a showing? Do you like to show up um, with a certain type of coffee for your clients? Or do you like to, this one lady I follow, she's all about the blazers. Every time she does a home tour, she's in a different blazer, but she starts her reel off with, like another home tour, another blazer. Welcome to 106 Aspen Landing. And it just like catches more than the real estate audience. It, ca right. it, it catches me because I'm obsessed with her blazers. I don't really care about the house she's showing. I, I, like, I like her outfit. Or I see another realtor with um, like a phone in his hand all the time now when he's shooting reels, but then he'll like resort to something on his phone into the reel. So there's a way to kind of make it beyond real estate. Add a little bit of Julia touch in there. Like, you know, showcase your home but also what makes you unique in showcasing that home? Gotcha. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, you know, something to think about because I, you know, whenever I do post um, property tours, I don't necessarily insert myself in those tours. It's a little bit of, I maybe imposter syndrome is the right word. Like it's very uncomfortable to put yourself in front of the camera the first few times. And then you start to feel a little weird and like an imposter. I felt that for literally eight months, you guys. Um, and it is a growing pain, just like it's a growing pain, what calling online leads, 
right? Like it takes months yeah. to figure out how to convert online leads and how to t- handle them and talk to them. So it's, it's just opening up a different pillar and finding what works for you, finding your niche, what makes you unique, what value are you going to give? Why should we follow you? You know, that, and, and answering all of those questions, um, in building your social. Gotcha. Thank you so much, Sydney. You're welcome. I hope that helped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one, one tip that I'd give, if you're like somebody that, that has like a very like good rapport with your clients and you like to joke around a lot, capture those moments with your clients, like have some fun with that. That's entertaining stuff. That's stuff I'd love to watch. Like anybody that knows me knows that I love to just like have a good laugh. So that's something that you would see if I was out with clients, I tease my clients, I tease people I care about and they do it back. And it's like that playful banter. So if that's your personality, do that. If you're a little more serious then be that person, what happens and said, you probably agree with this. You start attracting people that appreciate you for you. That's like the best thing about video is you're literally building an audience and the people that are going to start engaging and watching your stuff they like you for the person that you are. So just make sure that the person that you are is, is what they're going to get in real life. If you're faking and putting on this fake front, they're going to be disappointed when they meet you. But if they're, if you're that same person, they're going to feel like they already know you uh, Sid, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Uh, I do. I totally agree with you, Jason. Um, people are going to follow you. Like you said, for you and the authenticness and to give you, I, I guess, um, a perspective, I, the other day went on and talked about how I get cold sores. You can see I have one now I get stressed out and I I confronted it on my story. And I was talking about how my dog escaped. I'm like, PS got a cold sore. Don't come at me. Just come at me with recommendations. Nine people sent me cold sore recommendations and they loved it. They're like, thank you for showing that you get cold sores, that you're a human being. Another thing I can't spell for the life me left or right. Can't do that either. And I've like so many people message me about my spelling and it crushed my soul a little bit, but I treated it as a phone objection. I went right onto my story and I handled it. And I'm just like, you know what? Ta ta Tanya. If you are offended by my spelling, please take that elsewhere. Like, you know, be on my page to accept me for me, um, and get value for you. So um, just like that was very authentic, right? It's inauthentic for me to spell something right because that's not who I am. <laughs> um, I mean, I, it's funny because Paige and I actually talked about about your little rant the other day that you did, and we thought it was entertaining. And because uh, yeah. you're like, I, n- nothing bothers me, but then you were really bothered by somebody making fun of your spelling. But I love the authenticity of that because I know you, and I know that you're like a genuine person. But I also know that you have this little other sassy side, and it came out and. I thought it was brilliant, honestly, because it's like authentic. I, I used to get criticized because in my videos, I'd always talk with my hands. Remember that page? Like my hands would always be waving because I'm a very passionate person when I talk. And I used to get comments and haters. And you know what? I'm like, fuck it. I tried to do videos without using my hands and I felt weird. I felt like a robot and it was like not me. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to use my hands because that's me. And guess what? If you don't like my hands, you don't have to do business with me. Your hands, people commented and said oh Jason you stopped using your hands you know like it became part of you <laughs> you and you can't please everybody right like you know some people are like I love when you talk with your hands and be like I hate it how annoying is it when you're moving your hands well it's like you know what I'm just gonna be me and once you start leaning into that you're gonna be so much happier more successful you'll have so much more fun in what you do Mm-hmm. Um, that's one thing that I, I can honestly say, but I, I loved your rant the other day. Said we, we did talk about it, Paige and I, and, and I thought it was great. I we called have- myself a psychopath. <laughs> I was a little dramatic on that rant, but it needed to be done. And Jason, it got so much engagement. Like I thought I was going to get heat on that. And there were so many people that appreciated it. And they're like, thanks for saying that. I can't spell either. And it's not the end of the world. I live in a generation where we have spell check. So and that post of you saying that actually is when we were talking about it that's when we were like you know what by the way her account is going crazy like look at all these comments and that one post of you saying that about your spelling is what made us like reach out honestly we're like by the way yeah oh my god we should totally message her like (laughs) I love that well thank you I appreciated it yeah it shows like authenticity is so important it's funny because like so many people are sitting there insecure, worried about what people think. And like, you know, I, oh, I've got a zit today, so I can't show. It's like, 
listen, ladies, zits happen, guys, zits happen. It's like, who cares? That makes you more relatable. You have to understand it's those little imperfections that people feel like, oh, good. Like this is normal. This is somebody that I can feel like I can connect with. Nobody actually wants fake. Mm -hmm. I really don't think that. I don't think people want to go and get like a fake experience. They want to get a genuine experience. And if you, if you open up about some of those things, cold sore example, I now have this all natural nutrition company sending me a cold sore remedy for free to promote on my story. So the more authentic you get, and it doesn't matter how many followers you have, you can do so much with your social brands will sponsor you. Um, agents will join your team. Uh, you'll get free stuff in the mail all the time, which is kind of an added bonus, <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it creates that trust, right? Not only with the general public, but also with local brands, which is super cool, especially if you have a business, right? Um, there's this sandwich shop that sponsored me. So I get free sandwiches to like post their sandwiches, but in like from that, they're going to cater our open houses for sandwiches. And that came off social media. So like when people come through an open house, there's going to be some sandwiches there, which is awesome. And you wouldn't even think twice about that. And that's just from being super authentic. So everyone wants to see you. They want to know who you are. They want to know what type of agent you are, what type of mother and your clients become your friends. They become your family. They become referrals. So yeah, showcase that you have a lot to offer. Every single person does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. We have love at Sims too. Like we have, we film um, at different businesses and we tell the businesses who we are, um, our following, we mention it and they give us free things as well for giveaways. Um, we have a pizza company as well that sponsor, kind of sponsors us, but they give us free pizzas and they've given us probably 400 pizzas, 500 pizzas in the last year, just because they see how much we're posting and the reach that we have. And so it's awesome that other people and other agents, you guys can do that too. Um, just don't be afraid to post yourself. Let's trade. I'd take the pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jason said, also understand that haters are a good thing. Haters aren't a reflection of you. It's more a reflection of their own insecurities, which, yeah, which is true. Um, haters are going to hate. If you're not making waves and you don't have haters, guess what? You're not pushing hard enough. That's the, the truth in reality. Anybody, you could be Mother Teresa and you will have haters. Mm -hmm. That's the facts about like the world. And it's not a reflection of you. It's a reflection of people's own insecurities. And that's the hundred percent truth. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you start like disconnecting from trying to please everybody and you connecting, being your most authentic self, things will catastrophically in a good way, blow up for you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That was a bad choice of words. Catastrophically. I think there's a better <laughs> word. See, I can't even pronounce words, but you know, somehow it works. <laughs> yes. And you don't have to, you can feel good about it, right? Like it's you, you're showing you, you're not pretending to be who you want to be and, or who you think you should be is what I meant. Uh, personally was guilty of that. I, one of my best friends called me about two months ago and she's like, okay, I'm going to swear, but like, I, I'm a good person. So and she's like, what the fuck are you doing on Instagram? I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, your social media is so serious. That's not you. Like, you know, you um, are a giver and you're laughing and you're funny and you need to showcase that. And I was showcasing what I thought people wanted to see from me and the perception I thought people wanted to have from me. And I felt guilty doing this. Like I had that gut feeling in my stomach saying, this isn't you. Like, don't post this. This isn't you. And I still would do it because I saw myself comparing to these like Instagram bloggers that literally just get paid to post fancy photos and that's not who I am like I I do post like you know edited photos <laughs> like but uh it's I'm not uh I'm down to earth so my Instagram wasn't representing that and my friend called me right out on it I took it so to heart I readjusted my whole vibe but you're gonna have that you know you need to you need to make mistakes to find your niche and to find what you're really about. But the past 60 days when I post, I know people are getting value from it. It's I'm confident in what I'm posting because it's actually me like that spelling thing. I have a very sassy side to me sometimes and I showcase that. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. 
Um, Kelly said, does Bricks use any metrics to determine the amount of new clientele that comes through social media? No, good question though. Uh, <laughs> we probably should. My, my boyfriend, Riley, the owner of our team, we were actually talking the other day about how we can utilize our uh, following on there. One thing you guys should get into, it's tricky also because they don't know what it's like in different provinces, but giveaways. So we will do giveaways with different local companies under their name. Like they still have to follow bricks, but because like legally we can incentivize people as a real estate team, we'll work with other huge companies. Now we work with giveaways where there's like a buy-in. So we have to give like a $300 item that you guys might be sitting in there thinking like, what on earth? Why am I doing this? We got 700 followers in one week and it was a local giveaway. So it was date night YYC. So everyone in Calgary follows this page. They have like 200,000 followers because they're constantly posting the events in Calgary. And our giveaway was featured on that page. So we essentially like paid to use their platform, I guess. But all of those people are in Calgary. They're like Calgary moms wanting to win a Tiffany and Co bracelet we donated. So, and we didn't lose those followers. They're, they're organic and they know us as a local brand now because we collaborated with other local brands. So if you guys can get into that, I would definitely recommend, I think we have our second giveaway going right now. It wasn't with as big as local companies, but I think we got 110 followers from it, which is still pretty significant. Um, as for tracking metrics, I think that's, you know, you just gave us an awesome idea. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, I think that's awesome. If anyone has any other questions, please let me know. Um, we're happy to answer them for the last couple of minutes, but this has been super helpful. Thank you for coming on and speaking with us today. Yeah. Thank you. I hope it <laughs> helps some people out there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, did you want to put your um, Instagram handle in the comment here that sure. people can follow you and maybe the Burks one too. Yeah. I'll put both here. It, yeah. On the metrics front, I think one thing that we've noticed big time since the bricks page has just kind of expanded and grown. Um, we, it, it's kind of created a bit of a trifecta for what people are seeing and then the brand awareness. So our Google business page is, is really strong and obviously our website was strong and the branding was strong. And then we started to notice like a lot of trust and leads were actually better qualified once that social media page was built up because you'll have people that are kind of rotating and they'll go to your website. Then they'll go to Instagram to check your trust level. Then they'll go to your Google business page. And then as they kind of circulate through those different platforms, they're almost like learning about you and building trust. And I noticed that that was like a huge uptick for us once Sid like continue to build out the bricks page or the, our lead quality went up. So it wasn't really a metric that we could measure necessarily, but it's definitely something I think Sydney, you can agree. We all felt that internally, right? Yeah. And really important guys, if you're doing a personal brand with like a company, uh, Instagram, share the post to your personal story you know, so that way people still know you're in real estate. And that's what Riley kind of means is like, it all kind of circles. So when Bricks posts something, I share it to my Sydney account. Riley shares it to his Riley account. Um, if I share something on, for those that don't know, I'm also our team ISA. So sometimes like I'll share like ISA tips on my personal account. Cause I, there's a lot of agents on there. Um, then I repost it to the Bricks account. So cross, cross posting. <laughs> That. yeah totally that's very important as well <clears throat> just because then you're really just expanding your reach on things oh absolutely there's almost four thousand followers on the bricks account now so why not like utilize that and then the agents that don't follow me on the bricks account usually will because like the story they'll see my name on the story and vice versa that type of thing mm -hmm. awesome i have one last question one last question it's more of a pet peeve okay, okay. I hate airbrushed photos that like women are posting all over social media right now. It's driving me crazy. Cause like, listen, when I meet you, I'm like, you don't look like that. You actually look better in person. I'd rather that you had some flaws than that you had this fake like face. Like it doesn't, ah, it drives me crazy. <laughs> okay. 
what, what you can't your, see your nose. It it's like, like, why are you altering your nose? Like, it, it, it's like, please just like, let yourself be yourself. And like, what kind of message are you giving to other people and like other girls and stuff? Like, anyways, pet peeve of mine, but like, please don't airbrush your photos. You're beautiful the way you are people. You know, you could wear some makeup ladies. That's okay. But please don't alter your face. But maybe you disagree with me and, and I'm just ranting. <laughs> I don't do my feed posts altered, but I'll throw a filter on my story. Sometimes if I'm like really talking for a long time, I'll like put a filter on it. Mm. But yeah, as for the post, it's, it's a little bizarre. It's actually weird. I, I met an agent for lunch the other day. She wants to join a team off my personal account, but she's like, Oh, you actually look like your photos. And I was like, wait, that's a thing. And she's like, yeah, I work at orange fitness and there's girls that come in all the time and they don't look like their photos. So that's one thing too. If you meet people in person off your Instagram, make sure you look like you're. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, listen, if your headshot is from 10 years ago, when you were oh. like 50 pounds lighter or whatever, <laughs> please like update your profile. So like when people meet you, they're not like, Oh my God, you know what I mean? Like, just be yourself. It's okay. We're not, we're perfectly imperfect, but I know another pet peeve for another time. Show your cold sores, show your pimples. Yes. And who knows, you might even get some free skincare from it. Like I got some added juice green thing coming in that's supposed to help with cold sores. So. There's no such thing as a perfect, flawless human being. It does not exist. Mm-hmm. So like, stop trying to put that image out there because honestly, it's defending me. <laughs> and people will resonate with you more if you're not like adding stuff onto your posts, right? They're going to trust you. They're going to resonate with you. They're going to, you're going to make them feel like they're human too. Right. So be approachable, right? Like, I think that's important. If I'm getting the image that you're not approachable, then guess what? I probably would never reach out to you. But Mm -hmm. if I feel comfortable based on your content and you being yourself, I'm more likely to want to connect with you. So that's another little tip for everybody. Sid, Paige, amazing job today. Thank you so much. Great value. I know I took some good notes away from this. So uh, thanks everybody that jumped in and participated. And I hope you guys all have an amazing day. Thank you. Thank you for having me guys. Thank you. We appreciate you. Bye. Bye.